Hi, this is Anthony from the Board Game Nexus. Welcome to another episode of the weekly board game crowdfunding rundown for week ending April 17th, 2022. We will be covering games that launched this past week, games that will be ending in the coming week, and games that will be launching in the coming week. So we have a lot to cover. Strap in. Let's get to it. All right, so to kick things off, we're going to jump into games that launched this past week. So these are games that were on last week's episode that were coming the following week, right? So we're actually looking at those that, that actually launched. So the first one up, if you watched last week's episode, you'll know Barnyard, a bifold game. Didn't have a ton of information. This is where um, we get to see a little bit more about what these games are all about. So... Um, what is Barnyard a bifold game? It's a pocket-sized drafting game for two. That much we knew, right? So we get a little bit more into what the gameplay is. So it looks like on your turn, you choose an animal in the farm. It uses powers to manipulate the animals in the barnyard line. So you're, you're manipulating the, the order and placement of these cards. It's a two-player game, um, and you're kind of building your own corral. Um, animal score points based on, on other animals you've corralled with them. Carefully plan the layout of your corral, right? So... Uh, comes with a free expansion for all backwards. Number of different awards. Nice little magnetic case. I think that's that's a good bonus. Let's see what the price point is on this guy. So if you want the wallet game standard, it's ten bucks. Twenty four bucks deluxe edition. Um, definitely affordable. Neoprene play mats are always a nice touch. Um, you know, it looks like it could be a fun little game. Um, my only my only personal critique on this game is that the art is way way simple like i would have probably wanted to see a little bit more you know design and more oomph to the art here it's really just plain for me and that's i don't know I, i'm someone who looks at the aesthetics of a game and and i mean at the ten dollar price point i guess you could say it's it's really just simple art but um not my style. That's the only thing that would be a deterrent for me, but it's, uh, it's at 22, 24, 24, 100 out of 4,000 goal with 100 backers already, 21 days ago. They have plenty of time. Normally, a, a game only funded halfway, you know, is always, uh, not, not, in, not in the first week, I would think you'd want, I think this looks okay. Um, the fact that it's only a $4,000 goal, it's probably going to fund. So if you're interested in such a game, um, I say go check it out, but this thing is live now on Kickstarter. That's Barnyard, a bifold game. Very interesting. Um, this one um, also launched Legacy of Thrax the Awakening on Kickstarter. So you saw this. You see it's jumping up as we go. 57,000 of 50,000 gold. So it's already funded. Um, as they're, they're quick to add their little tag on that to say, yeah, this, this guy funded. Um, it's coming out of Middletown, Delaware. That's funny because that's pretty local to me. I wonder how many games are actually truly designed in Delaware or are they just incorporated in Delaware because of the tax-free status. But... That's a good, interesting point. But let's see. Legacy of Thrax, The Awakening. Um, we covered this a little bit last time. Um, so I won't go too much into these. Uh, one to four player, 30 minutes per player. This is a uh, epic asymmetric, asymmetric competitive fantasy strategy board game. I think that alone interests me. It just sounds pretty cool. Not a huge fan of asymmetric unless it's done right. And if you've followed our channel long enough, you know what I define as right and not so right. Um, what I don't like are games, asymmetric games that are so beholden to a player count that if you only play with a certain player count, you can only play certain um, characters or classes or you're limited to what you do for the playthrough, right? So in a two-player count, you're always going to be these two entities. In a four-player player count, you can play with all four of the entities, um, but you can't mix and match, right? Because they're balanced at a certain level. To me, that's very limiting, to uh, to a couple who only really plays two player games, um, so that's a it's an immediate turn off for me. But um, this one looks like it's one to four player, which is cool. I like the theme. I think the um, the look of the game is really sleek and nice. Um, looking at rush normal 130 minutes, so a two hour game. I get it. Um, it looks pretty big, pretty pretty chunky. Nice minis. Yeah, this is a pretty hot game. So you know, it's obviously it's funded. 
uh, price point is $79. That's very reasonable. Deluxe edition, $89. Bucks. Um, really, really reasonable entry fee. I think this is this is one I'd back. So as I said before, I, I like to give you an indication on something that I would or would not back personally. Um, this one, uh, yeah, I'd go for it. Um, for sure. And it does have solo. Uh, Turchi's doing it. He's sort of the go-to solo designer so um if you like his solo um automas then yeah go for it but you know it's a nice little add-on um so yeah i would probably go for this one uh moving on uh let's see yeah so like i said i'm gonna cover this too it's 20 days to go so you know how much more time these are the ones that launched so they are all at the very beginning of their of their run so they they've all at least got three weeks left right so that's what we talked about last week too maglev metro we mentioned that we never played maglev still holds true we've not played maglev um heard great things about it um we uh are in fact getting a copy of maglev to uh review on our channel we will absolutely get that out as soon as possible because we're very excited to try this one out um i think it, the game looks looks fantastic and i think if looking at the expansion the quality components um and based on all the good things we've heard about the original if you're an owner of maglev i think that you will probably want to get this expansion now a couple different things going on here so we've got this mechs and monorails expansion for 30 moon base and mars for 30 or london and paris for 30 right and then you've got the maps expansion which is all three so maps volume one all three expansions in a luxury box plus 104 screen printed passengers for 80 dollars like you'd be a fool not to get the 80 dollar one to get all three uh for 120 comes with an additional copy of the base game so if you do not have the base game i would say 120 is an absolute no-brainer Definitely from, and I'm only speaking from what I've heard. I can't speak from experience, but I've heard great things about this game. So uh, I, I highly recommend you look into this. If you're already an owner, you're probably have already backed the $80 uh, level. If you're not, uh, and you know anything about this game, you're probably looking at the 120. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely be looking really hard at this one uh, if I didn't own this game. So 118,000 out of 10,000 blew away. It's, it's goal in 14 minutes. Um, not surprised at all. So um, very in interested in this one. Very, very interested in this one. So um, 24 days to go, 1,300 backers. I'm sure this one will kill it over the next coming week. So definitely go check this one out. All right. So this one was called, uh, I think it was called The New Game. It had some kind of code name, uh, if you remember, on GameFound. But the, the official name of this thing by Cyanide and Happiness is Master Dater. Um, play on words there if you if you catch what they're going for, right? It's uh, the newest card game from Sign and Happiness. It's a party game, right? So we're not party game people, but I know a lot of you out there are. Three to six players usually is very exclusive uh, for us because we're usually just two. But we do have some nights where we do have the family, and a twenty minute game for three to six actually is is really nice to have in our in our collection. Um, looks like you're you're combining tops and bottoms of different characters to meet the goals of some objective cards all so, like to date right so i need someone who will help me hide a body right now uh which one of these would you trust to help you hide a body the god digging a hole or a dog secret agent right so interesting right combine a head combine a body make the perfect date for these three interests i guess you've got to kind of combine the three so this person wants outdoorsy that plays hard to get and only dates rich people so i guess the best match wins um interesting the art's cute it's a bit simplistic but i guess it's it's all i guess it's part of their their shtick um as a party game what's the price what's the buy-in here um just got to get used to this interface they're discounting the base game for five dollars for everyone who backs it here yada 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 65 dollars for the big love edition so this comes with the uncut. So I bet you there's a dirty version of this so for those of you who want want the dirty version. Um, uncut expansion for 35 So the price. It's a little pricey for a card game. But looks like the 150 was already sold out. Interesting. So look, if you need a party game and you're willing to invest, I, I'm always a little 
eh, when the price points that high for a card game. Um, but hey, that's just me. Looks fun. Looks like it'd be a good time. Three to six players. Um, 27 days left. 319,000 out of 42. So quite a few people like this one, right? 5,000 people. It's a party game. It's uh, a lot of people like to party games. Uh, would I back this personally? No, I don't do party games. Like it's just, it's, if we happen to pass it by and I looked at it, I might pick it up, but I wouldn't, I don't typically go out of my way to, to scoop up party games. That's just us. We just, we don't have enough opportunities uh, to play them that it's worth uh, the investment. All right. And finally, Mall Peak, uh, 17 days to go on this one, 75,000 out of 20,000. Mall Peak is the follow up or sequel, if you will, to Skullcala. Skullcala, we, we actually did a, uh, a preview video on our channel a while back um, where you fight these like giant beasts um, that come out on the board. Um, really neat, really interesting. It's kind of like Shadow of the Colossus where you kind of climb up the monster and attack different parts of it. Um, really good quality game. It's good fun. Um, this was, uh, this one is, uh, like I said, it's a sequel. Uh, looks very very much like the same quality as Skull Call. Skull Call is a really good game. Uh, definitely one that I would recommend. Uh, it's just good fun, right? There's just certain games at that that are just fun. Um, and, you know, the, the it's not something you can go wrong with, right? So um, if you have Skull Call, I think this is standalone. Yeah, so this is the, this is, let's see, Return of All New Guardians and the Grizzar and the Standalone. Yeah, so it's a standalone cross-compatible sequel. So I think you can combine the two games. So if you have Skull Kahlo, this is kind of a no-brainer, right? Just to expand that collection if you enjoyed Skull Kahlo. Uh, if you don't, you want to sort of experience, you know, this um, with the asymmetrical uh, combat. So it's like really, it's a really neat game, really neat mechanic. And like I said, it's very, it's very easy game to get into. And it's, it's just nice to look at. It's a pretty game. Um, we definitely enjoyed this one for sure. Skull Kahlo, that is. Uh, so yeah, I would be interested in this one. Would I back it? Yeah. So definitely, uh, definitely would back this one. So I think that that ends all the games that launched. So those are new. You've got some time to go do some research, check them out. Um, next segment, we're going to cover games that are ending within the next week. So we'll see you back here. All right, moving on to games that are ending. As you see, High Noon Showdown ending in 68 hours. So we're looking at just under three days. Uh, 8,900 out of 11,250. Um, if this were a larger spread, I'd say it's probably not going to fund. But we're only talking about $2,300, $2,400 um, to get this funded, which isn't really that big of a stretch. It could happen. It could happen. Um, this is a, an interesting game. Um, it's it's definitely a Western sort of showdown theme where you're you're drawing simultaneously from decks of cards, um, and you're it's basically like a gun like a shootout, right? Where you're going to actually draw cards, draw cards, and then boom, you throw them down. The other player has to like beat you or not, and then you lose health, and then you do it again. So it's a quick, quick little game. Um, Twenty five bucks. For a copy, so like I said, that's that's sort of the, in my opinion, the the sweet spot for card games, especially simple card games, um, that you know that you're willing to just scoop up for twenty five bucks. That's a no brainer. That's a, that's sort of an impulse buy. That's sort of that, like I said, that sweet spot of where you'll get a lot of people to just pick it up if if they're into it. Um, I don't know. I think was this something I'd play? Nah, I like them a little chunkier. I like my games a little bit. You know, media. It's a three to eight. So again, it kind of it kind of shuns the two player, um, you know, in us. That's what that's us. We're two players. Fifteen to forty five minutes is is cool. Um, Thirteen plus, but uh, it, for me, it's not not something that that Francis and I would 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 probably play. But I mean, it doesn't look terrible, and it's pretty cheap. So I mean, one hundred sixty eight people enjoyed it, but uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna fun. But it might. But if you're interested, you got sixty eight hours to go figure out whether or not you want it. You can watch the video. Uh, we get a feel for the play. I don't know. Not something I back, though, but that, that's just me. Uh, next one is Jurassic World, The Legacy of Isla Nublar. Now, we had the privilege of of getting a an in-person demo of this um, in um, PAX Unplugged, right? So at the convention, we were there. It's our local convention, so the main one we go to. 
got to take a look at the board, got to take a look at the components. Um, it is a legacy game for sure, uh, based in Jurassic Park. I don't think you need anything else to know that you need to buy this game because that alone is um, is enough set, right? So I would definitely be um, backing this one personally. Like this is definitely something I I would I would definitely look at. Like I said, it's a legacy game. The quality looks good. It the art style is pretty like retro almost comic booky. Um, I thought it, it it had a lot of charm to it. Um, like I said, it is a legacy game. Let's see what the price point is here. So it's a uh, 120 bucks, but I think there's a ton. Yeah, there's 12 different adventure scenarios, um, and and a bunch of secret stuff in there. And I think they mentioned that. Um, it has replayability even after. So um, it looked really good. I'm not going to lie. So um, I would I would definitely do this one. I don't think there's much more I need to say about it. Jurassic Park Legacy game. Yeah, come on. So there's only three days left on this one, though. It's at almost a quarter, uh, half a million dollars out of 100 grand. So it's way funded. Um, three days to go. I highly just suggest if you haven't looked at this, go look at it. it it'll be worth your time. A Jurassic World Legacy of Isla Nublar. All right, next one ending is Darkest Doom, a competitive strategy RPG game. So this one's at three hundred fifty thousand out of a six hundred uh, sixty four thousand dollar goal. All these non US based ones always have weird numbers, um, but this is a um, an RPG board game. So um, sort of like dark sort of art interesting animation like I, I think that's a really interesting character design uh dark fantasy world inspired by 17th century europe and inhabited by anthropomorphic animals uh really interesting um tons of miniatures like that's usually what gets people all fired up to get their wallets out uh, you know these are really hot looking minis uh so yeah looks pretty cool uh i'm not gonna lie do we have is there a shortage of of these rpg uh miniatures board games no i think there's absolutely not a shortage of these but there are no there is no shortage of people who want to buy them right 2700 people either so this is like the magic the magic sauce i think is uh just get you know a nice uh, you know a dual layer player board good nice slick art great looking minis on a board yeah, you're looking at quarter mil minimum, and then go from there. If the game's good, you're doing even better. Uh, so what are we looking at here? Darkest Doom Pledge. So the core box plus an expansion, 99 euro. Not not bad, actually. Uh, 150 euro, uh, which is about $162. I love how our our uh, foreign exchange rates are pretty are so tight now. Uh, it used to be like one and a half times. Uh, for the US dollar. So it used to be brutal to buy euro. Uh, but in any case, it's that, that's a much bigger price point, obviously. But I think you're getting a good value for your for your buck with all these minis and the dual air boards. The game looks looks slick. Um, I would probably do a little bit of research and, and probably back this one. Four days. Four days, folks. Get on it. Darkest Doom. Go check it out. All right. Next game. Casting Shadows. So this one is amazingly amazingly funded 2.8 million dollars 25,000 backers three days to go strategic board game for the creators of unstable unicorns and here to slay what's the secret sauce on this one that's that's a good question right so what in the world is driving this thing to to such levels that it must be these little little like animal chibi miniatures that everybody wants to get their hands on right um i mean it looks pretty right you got spells starting to turn you roll five resource side turn which resource you have at your disposal which can be gems right? used to learn new spells and use these spells to attack your opponent so it's just a combat game like what is what is the draw here allow you to bring out companions i don't know what is the price point here Start at standard 30 bucks. See, this is what I'm talking about. You hit the right price point here, and you have a quality looking game that looks fun. The art's good. And you just you just print money at that point, right? I mean, it's a it's a tile-based 
looks probably asymmetric dice rolling resource uh, game where you're fighting each other on a board. Combating and $2 million. Like, that's insane. Insane. Yeah, going around the board fighting each other. Like, uh, that's... Throughout the game, you collect resources, learn new spells, summon companions if you're lucky, or unlock your shadow form. Unlock your shadow form, and all the quests becomes the ultimate shadow caster. Last player standing in the supernatural shadow wins the game. So it's it's basically a, a last man standing combat game. 25,000 people love that. Not at all interested for me. Like I, I'm just not into these like arena style games. Um, but clearly, a lot of people are for $2 million. That's, that's the secret sauce, too. Man, jeez insane amount of money so look if you want to get on this hype train you only have three days left so you better get your checkbook out you only need to write a 39 dollars check right and you're in 30 dollars even 30 bucks right 30 bucks all in all in 25 people crazy 20 million so three days left casting shadows if you're into that these types of games then i'd say go for it but not for me i'd have to pass on that one all right, six days left on Nightmare Cathedral, 137,000, um, 1,454 backers. So Nightmare Cathedral, um, we did a playthrough on our channel for. Um, really, really good time with this one. Uh, we enjoyed it. It was um, some pretty sick art, pretty fun game. I thought it was really cool. Um, go check out our video if you want to get more information on it. But you've got six days left. And, you know, what's the price point on this thing? Nightmare Pledge is $98. There's a ton of, of miniatures and, like, this whole cathedral. Like, there's a lot of plastic in this box. So I get the price point. It makes sense. Um, so it's not like I'm, I'm surprised by where that price point is. The art is really creepy as all heck in this game but it was it was neat man it was definitely a different a different game like it was a different experience but we enjoyed it there we are smiling just got done playing um 137,000 it's backed i would go for this one board and dice good stuff go check it out uh let's see where are we next uh, five days left on a game called Pathways, a skillful dexterity game. So this is a flicking game played on an elegant bamboo board with custom discs. Now, yeah, look, I'm, I don't typically love flicking games, but this one actually looks like it could be pretty fun uh, because you're not like throwing stuff across the room and it's built on a solid bamboo board. It actually looks pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I, I'm telling you, I don't like dexterity games for the most part. I would definitely play this game. Definitely play this game. What is the price here? Uh, 69 Canadian or 55 US dollar. Includes all components of the base game. Or you can get it with the neoprene. I don't know if you need the neoprene mat for 95, but $69 for this because it's made of wood and the plastic. I'd back this one. This is one for me. $24,000, 312 backers, five days to go. It's well-funded. I think if you like Dex games, this one looks like it could be pretty cool. Sort of a different take on, like, Connect 4 or Checkers. But looks neat. Definitely neat. So check it out. Pathways, a skillful dexterity game. Next up, we have UND1C1, the best soccer board game ever. That remains to be seen. Um, I don't know. I'm, at first glance, it doesn't look like the best soccer game board game ever. But then again, maybe this is more of a technical game. It looks very, I don't know, just very bland. 213,000 though. 2,000 people would disagree with me. Tell me I'm crazy. Um, I'm, maybe because I'm not a soccer fan. Uh Two players, age 11 plus, 45 to 60 minutes. Um, I mean, interesting? Sure. I like when they try to, you know, make uh, sports games into board games. because like They've got, like, different players. I don't even know if these are real players, but they have, like, different abilities. Um, you know, I mean, I who am I to say if this isn't the best soccer game ever? I've never played another soccer game. This could be the only soccer game, which there by default makes it the best soccer game ever. But... Um, I'd be interested and in, and in, in give this a go. Look, I would I sit down and play this game if somebody had on the table? Sure. 
I'd give it a go. I'd probably be terrible at it because I don't really understand soccer um, other than kick the ball in the goal. But um, I would try it. Would I back it? Where are we looking at? 59 euro as the buy-in? Personally? No, not for me. I think theme has a lot to do with it. If you love soccer, you're probably already looking at this one um, as, as a tabletop game. Like, why not? It's cool, but not for me. You got five days left to get in on it if you're a big soccer fan. I don't even know what UND1C1 stands for. Um, if someone could tell me that, that'd be cool too. $213,000. Um, it's a lot of money for a soccer board game. Well, I guess it's, since it is the best soccer board game ever, probably not. Um, but that's it. Go check it out. You've got five days left. That's on Kickstarter. All right. And then Unition is um, an asymmetric battle royal deck builder with two paths to victory. Just look at that. Just about fun. That it's, we just saw it creep up a little bit. It just needs now another uh, $971. That's it. And they're funded crazy so close i'd be sweating at this point sweating so we got two to five player 901 20 12 minutes looks like hidden information type game so player starter cards to get stronger cards so you start with so that was a deck builder you play with starter cards you get stronger cards to crush your foes to destroy your enemy see them driven before you uh in munition players have two possible ways to win use womp to reduce all the other players health tokens to zero and be the last one standing so it's another one of those last one standing games maybe it has some unique characteristics um looks like you've got a bunch of different um like species fighting against each other i mean it's colorful in its own way um maybe i'm just not into these combat -y type games uh it's a card game what's the buy-in at for a combat card game, not print and play. $26 for the game, for one physical copy. Boom. Sweet spot. $26, as I was saying. That is the that is the impulse buy price. Right? That's the price tag. So is a card game on the surface worth $26, in my opinion? Yes. Now, it's up to you to decide if that game itself is something that will get played in your collection. For me personally, no, because you know we're not big fans of these attack games, right? Where you fight each other, where you're building a deck to beat each other down. It's just not not something that we play. But it looks interesting if you're into these games. For 26 bucks, go look at it. You only got five days. Right? Help get it funded. It just needs 900 plus. So go check it out. All right, so we have Rhyme That Line. A simple yet hilarious party game that creates lasting memories through quick quick rhymes and good times. So these games can be fun if you're in a group. 8,800 out of 5,000. It's been it's been funded. 146 backers. Five days left. Uh, choose a phrase. So last time I was in a bathroom stall. Everyone writes a rhyme with that phrase. I made an ultimately oh an untimely butt dial call. And then get laughs. Laughing ensues. Win points. That's the game, right? Um, this could be fun. So if you're in a group, I think this would be a great icebreaker. Uh, this would probably be a cool thing, like if you had like a breakout session at work and you were doing a little team bonding. This would be a fun game, I guess, to, to kind of, you know, get some creativity from your colleagues, get some laughs, break the ice a bit. Um, these are fun. These can be really fun. So being that it's just a card game, with some dry erase markers. I think I'm, what should be in the 20 plus range. $29, early bird. 39 for the Rhyme Blazard. Um, I'll go with that. I think it's worth it. Would I buy this one? Yes. This one looks fun. Rhyme that line. $8,800, already funded. I think it's, I think it's probably good. So I would do this one. Go check it out. See if it's something that you're interested in. You have five days to figure that out. All right. Boss Dog, the card game with Canine Criminals, Chaos, and Cannoli. Interesting. $60,000. Amazes me to see what games actually get the funding versus others. Where some games I think should be funded big, and they're not. Some games I'd be like, anybody back in this? And there are. Really interesting. 
948 backers. I'd love to see like a real good um, statistical analytics of this on um, on like themes versus mechanics versus art and see what actually the real secret sauce is. That'd be a cool project. Five days to go on this one. Um, bon oh, Bonjourno. We're the boss dogs. See, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm already like, mm. I guess you have to be a real, real, real super dog lover. Look, I like dogs, no, no doubt. I've, I've had dogs most of my life. So, you know, I consider myself a dog lover, um, but not to this degree. I don't know. Dogs and outfits always make me feel weird. I guess that's the thing. Like dog pictures with in, in, in human clothes. Always kind of a little... Oh, uh, a little weird to me. Let's see. That's just me, though. Uh, okay, first, everyone chooses a boss dog, like the the dog father or good fella. So it's going to be filled with all sorts of these plays on words, right? So you get your boss, and you deal each player four playing cards and a dog. And then on each turn, players pick one card from the deck and then place a food card next to your dog, diffuse another player's dog with a garbage card, discard a card, or play an action card, like steal some stuff. It's a lot of take that. You're just a bunch of like mafia dogs, I guess, right? That's what it is. Boss dog, right? So you're, you're mafia dogs. You're going after each other. I guess I could see the, the fun in that, in the theme. It's interesting. Um, and you get a free plushie with every pledge of 30 or more. So so that's gonna, that's that's the hook. That's the hook right here. Early bird, thirty-five dollar pledge. For thirty-five, I think that's that's why this again. This is in, it's the right the right price for the right amount of game. That's why it's funded, folks. That's why she's funded sixty dollars. And you know, a lot of dog lovers out there who are just obsessed with all these different dog cards. So they need to they need to have this. Like I need more of this in my life, right? So go for it. Not for me. Most likely for you. Go check it out. You've got five days left if you love dogs and you love the mafia and you like that whole theme. Two to four players. 20-minute game about dogs and mafia. All you. Go check it out. Um, and Encyclopedia. All right. 236,000 pledged of 16,295. So this is... Um, this is well-funded. So it is a set sail and study some of the world's most fascinating creatures and become the biggest contributor to Buffon's encyclopedia. So um, I do like these sort of uh, like literary themed games where you're like kind of collecting information like Darwin and or, or just going out and like looking at research and turning in your research and, and making discoveries. I think those games really, really appeal to me. Um, like I think the art's beautiful. I like this style. Um, yeah, all of it looks pretty pretty sharp to me. Yeah, I mean, really looks good. Well, everybody throws these quotes in. Like, do these quotes really matter <laughs> at the end of the day? Like, does anybody take those quotes to heart and be like, oh, yeah, you know what? I need to do that because this person says they loved it. I will love it too. Like, I don't know. I never, I, I never ever felt that way. Well, that's just me. Um, I think it's funny. I not no no lie. We've given quotes, and I just I never personally see the value in that. I don't think it's, I don't know. I don't think people are that influenced by what people are telling them to buy. I think I think they're going to make their own decisions based on how much they're willing to spend. I don't know whether or not that game is something they're going to want to play. I'd hate for somebody to buy a game because I said something about it that triggered them to buy the game without them really ever looking into the game and deciding on their own to buy that game. Like I'd like to, I'd like for them to be educated enough about the game to make that decision and uh, you know and my my opinion on it maybe is that last ounce that they needed to take them over the make, take them over the finish line um but that's it that's as, that's as much as i would try to weigh that on but in any case what are we looking at here um the base pledge receive a copy of the game and the promo cards 49 euro about 54 bucks done all in pledge, eighty six. I think that's that's a no brainer. I'd be in on this. Sign me up, folks. I would go for this one. Thirty two hundred other people agree. Two hundred thirty seven thousand. Five days to go. Encyclopedia. I definitely say 
go check this one out. You don't have a lot of time left. All right. And I think that might be the last one. Uh, no, we got one more. Throw Octopus. Oh boy. It is a challenging tile placement puzzle game for one to five set in a magical octopus world of the tropical reef. So this is like a kid's game for sure. Underwater realm. Yeah, seven plus. Tropical reef. Living a clever mighty octopus who was surrounded by colorful friends. And they lived in harmony. So now you must use your cunning. Uh, so a storm invaded the reef. Uh, rescue the return of the colorful sea creatures to the reef. All right. So let's see what we got. That's a solid nine out of ten. Must be good. Must be good. All right. So tile game. So 85 tiles. Action cards. Another plushie. That's the thing. Everybody's throwing in plushies. Can't resist that. It's an interesting looking shark. Wow. Okay. That is... <laughs> All right. This... this Ah, okay. The NSFWF. <laughs> uh, that, that caught me off guard. I didn't see this earlier today. Uh, when I was going through this, that is freaking hilarious. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Whew, can't be unseen, man. All right. So how do you play this? Each player starts. I don't know why that was, there was a need to throw that in, right? You got a game for, you know, a child themed game, seven plus cutesy game. And then you're like, hey, we're going to just slip this NSFW pack in here for those of you who kind of need that. Whew, I don't know. That just seems kind of weird. It's kind of weird. All right. Each player starts at eight tiles. When it's your turn, play one of your tiles. Probably. So it's a tile placement game, right? So your building needs like pictures. Uh, so if you draw the animal, you get to draw a card. That seems pretty cool. Um, what's the price point on this guy? 25 bucks. Done deal. I would try this one. I think this would be fun to play with kids. I'd probably not include this guy just because I was like, man, that must be a mistake, but it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, somebody was having a lot of fun doing that pack when they were drawing. Whoever the artist was, was having a really good time at that. Uh, just funded over 10,000, 213 backers, six days to go. Um, it looks fun. 25 bucks. I'd probably, I'm on the fence. I think I might, might do it. It looks cool. Um, maybe, I don't know. Go check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, you have six days to figure that out. 25 bucks. It's at the right, you know, it's at the impulse buy point. It's a card game. Um, is it, it looks cute. Looks cute. Go check it out. Um, oh, and we have Age of Rome. Now we covered this one last week as well. Um, this must have been a really short uh, campaign. So we have six days to go. One hundred four thousand dollars. So they are funded. Thirteen hundred. We we covered this as well. This one looks really really good. Uh, I think I said I'd back this one. That hasn't changed. Um, definitely think you should go, uh, look at this one. You have six more days still. Um, definitely something I think, uh, we would enjoy for sure. So that's Age of Rome. And I think, uh, oh, here we go. Dated the trivia card game. This is a uh, trivia game. So simple. Anyone can buy it. I love the fact that this is done in a VHS tape case. Um, uh, I'm sure... There's many of you out there who are younger and don't know what this is. Rest assured, those of us in my age bracket, we all know and love uh, this. <laughs> it brings back many, many memories. So it's a pop culture trivia game where the player gets the closest to the actual release date wins. Um, a release date guessing game. Um, I guess it really comes down to how much is in the box, right? Are we getting a lot of stuff? Um, a lot of cards. It's got some playability because I guess once you you get through the deck, is it is it going to be is it going to be something that you um, you you can't play anymore? Like because you've already figured it all out. I don't know, but let me see. What's the price point at? Um, one of the first people to get a copy, twenty bucks, just because of the theme here. Um, and the look, the art style, the fact that it hits a lot of nostalgia, this is for me, this is a this is an insta back. Without a doubt. No questions asked. Uh those of you in my demographic are probably along with me on that. Uh I I just can't get over the way this looks. I think that was so creative. So creative. Sixty three hundred dollars. It's already funded. Two hundred and eighty backers, nine days to go. You got nine days to figure this one out. Um go for it. I'd say 
this is definitely one you need to go check out. Go check this out. This one looks like it could be fun. Even just to have it, I think, in my collection, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, yep, and that ends us uh, on the games releasing um up through april 17th so that's everything that we've we've gathered that is coming out in the next week so uh that's ending in the next week so you've got to go check out uh all these campaigns before they end you've got anywhere from two to nine days to get your pledge in if you want to back these games um and that's that's all them so let's go check out uh, i have just four uh, four more games that are launching uh, next week. So let's cover them next. All right, so finish us off here. Um, these are all the campaigns that are starting in the coming week. Uh, we've got four games to cover here. So this one's on GameFound, and it is called uh, For Northwood. This is a trick-taking game. Looks cute. I think the art here is, is classy. It's a solo trick-taking game, which is even cooler. Um, definitely interested in looking at this. We've, we've recently come into trick-taking um, and enjoy it. So I think this would be one that would be be worth checking out, I think, uh, for sure. Two days, 23 hours. So just under three days left to go check that out on GameFound. So mark your calendars, folks. This one's coming. Followed by Birds of a Feather, Western North America. So it's a beautiful birding card game uh, grab your binoculars and your birding journal it's time to hit the trails and see some birds so these are um, card games don't know what kind of card game this is yet uh, we will have more information on this stuff and I'm using these these Kickstarter uh, preview pages and project pages which don't really give you a lot of information um, we're going to be adding these to the board game Nexus database um, in the future, so you'll be able to see uh, the coverage on there where we have a lot more of the mechanics and and hopefully more uh, of the art and more images from those games as well that we can get uh, uploaded into the, into the website. So um, this one's interesting. Mark your calendars. Don't know exactly when it's coming, but it is coming in the next week. Uh, another one coming up April 12th is Dark Quarter by Lucky Duck, cooperative narrative game exploring the dark quarter of 1980s New Orleans. Really cool. You know it's going to be a very, a very narrative experience. Um, assuming it's app integrated like most of their stuff is, um, but that remains to be seen. Just want to see how much of the game is based on the app and how much of it is actually on the board. So I like, as long as there's a nice balance there, I think, I think we've got something to look at here. So check that out. And finally, we have Paradox Initiative, which is a secret paradox and to solve puzzle of your paradox engine to the harvest world for study. Don't know anything about this one. Um, looks space and sci-fi themed, but um, but we'll get more information next week, obviously, when we, when we have next week's episode. So um, that wraps it up, folks. Um, I hope you were able to follow along and, and hopefully pick out some games that, that um, you know, piqued your interest and you went to go um check out our list and go look at them and maybe back some and um you know back something that maybe you weren't going to do that before we we pointed it out but um hope you got enough information out of that leave any comments below i've got all the links timestamps everything should be in the in the uh the description section for this video um and we'll see you next week take care <laughs>